So uh, the next thing I wanted to bring to your attention is that there are so many stories of children who have overcome these challenges, especially with regard to pans and pandas. So um, I was a co-author on a book called Brain Under Attack that came out a couple of years ago. And in this book, we wrote this for parents. It's meant to be sort of a guide to help parents um, overcome the challenges with their children, help their children get on the road to recovery and, and restoration of their health. In this book, we have several stories where parents have shared their experiences of how their child recovered from pans and, and pandas. So um, this uh, one, I wanted to share with you just one story. Um, this is a story of Pamela and her son was diagnosed with um, pandas. And um, she actually, um, she got him all the way better um, and she, as a result, she actually started a company where she has a couple of supplements that are meant for gut repair and helping restore your immune system. She was so profoundly moved by the experience she had in bringing her son through his healing journey that she sort of made it her life's work. Um, you can learn more about her at hello.health, but I'm going to have you um, listen to Pamela um, and just hear her story. Hi, this is Pamela Worth, founder of Hello Health and I'm coming to you from Arizona. Uh, wanted to explain how we started Hello Health and why it really began um, as a journey trying to figure out why uh, my son was reacting the way he was. He had gone from this perfectly normal child, age five, to baby talking, crawling, eyes constantly dilated, devoid of, devoid of all emotion, really sad, would hide under the desk at school, um, would sleep a lot of hours, and we couldn't understand what was going on. Um, went to a number of different doctors. They would say things like, kids will be kids, it's just allergies. When we put him on Prozac, he seems depressed. Uh, another doctor said, um, when we put him in observation for two weeks at the hospital, uh, another doctor said, you know, he's autistic now, you're gonna have to take care of him the rest of his life. And then that's when things just felt really hard and really heavy and uh, went on a quest to find a doctor that wanted to understand why. And I found out that there are doctors called integrative and functional that look at the whole body. So found a integrative neurologist because I figured if it was affecting, you know, mood and motor and vocal, it must be, uh, must be neurology. So this neurologist uh, pulled blood, found that he had an active viral infection, bacterial infection, low D3, low B12, and a genetic marker called MTHFR. Uh, the viral infection um, was a common infection in school age children, apparently called CMV. The bacterial infection was strep, even though he'd never ever had strep throat before and still tested negative for strep throat, which was crazy and wild. Um, and the way the doctor explained it was these vitamin deficiencies basically put his immune system at a major disadvantage to fight, fight these infections, which had crossed the blood brain barrier and it triggered these motor vocal and mood disorders. So we went on a quest to figure out, and then she said it's massive inflammation is really what's going on. So if you can control the inflammation, if you can control the virus, control the bacteria and get the vitamin levels back up, you're going to be fine. So it seemed really daunting. Uh, she assured us everything was going to be fine. It took about a year and our son is back and he hasn't left us since um, many years later. And it was through these supplements that this neurologist told us how to take and when to take and how to take and a collaboration with uh, formulators, manufacturers, non-GMO, organic suppliers that we, and gluten-free, uh, that we created Hello Health's Belly Great and Mighty Might. So I would just encourage you to stay on your why. Please don't give up. And uh, you too will experience great health. Thank you. So that's um, Pamela, who's uh, a friend of mine. And uh, like I said, made it her mission uh, for helping other families uh, now that she's come out on the other side of this. I'd like to show you another video. Um, this is a video that was posted to YouTube. You can see um, this on YouTube as well um, by Dr. Sabine Hazan, who is um, a gastroenterologist in Southern California. She does um, microbiome analysis. So she does actually genetic sequencing of the microbes in the gut and is doing really profound, amazing work. This was one of her patients who um, came to her with a sudden onset of Tourette's-like symptoms um, and was diagnosed with PANS. And I'm gonna let you watch this video a little bit and then I'll tell you a little bit more about Dr. Hazan.
Where do you feel it? In your neck? What do you mean? Where do I feel it? I don't feel anything. It's just happening. Okay. What? 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 Okay. Like totally stuck. Okay, so there's some key takeaways um, from this story. And you can read about this story. This um, case study was published um, not too long ago in the Journal of Infectious Diseases and Therapy, again, by Dr. Sabine Hazan, gastroenterologist, Southern California. Some of the key takeaways in this experience was a sudden onset for this child. Again, we've, we've talked about how that is typical with PANS and she obviously had a Tourette's-like syndrome as well. And, um, you know, she obviously had nutritional deficiencies. And, and um, what's interesting about this was the first um, line of therapy they did is they prescribed her antibiotics and gave her nutritional supplements. And that wasn't enough. And it was kind of trying to figure out what was it that was still there and still a problem. And Dr. Sabine Hazan has actually been really breaking new ground because she is um, in this case, she illustrates how this child was tested for SARS-CoV-2 via PCR, and it came up negative, 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 even though it had been in the home. So Dr. Hazan had speculated that SARS-CoV-2 was present 
And so was causing some kind of precipitation of symptoms. She eventually isolated it in the stool. So Dr. Hazan's one of the few physicians who's doing DNA sequencing of um, uh, SARS-CoV-2 and finding it in people's stools, even when their, their PCR tests are negative. So it's, it's an interesting finding. And then obviously one of the things that happened in this child's therapy was that she continued to get um, nutri nutri uh, uh, nutritional support, um, nutritional supplements, uh, high doses of vitamin C, but also she got um, fermented foods, right? Putting yogurt in different kinds of fermented foods. What Dr. Hazan focuses on is the microbiome. So her effort to support this child was focusing in on strengthening and diversifying the microbiome. And as you may have read in that last slide, that was really what brought her back to normalcy was the high dose vitamin C and the diet changes that put in the fermented foods and the, um, the yogurt. And she tested her microbiome at the end and the microbiome had been somewhat restored. So I think this is really cutting edge stuff and you can learn more about Dr. Hazan. Um, you can Google her and see some of her work. She's a bunch of NIH sponsored clinical trials looking at microbiome restor restoration, including fecal, fecal microbiome transplant. And that's basically um, using somebody else's stool um, and the microbes in their, um, in their gut and, and bringing that to somebody else, like you would an organ transplant. It's, it's transplanting the, the microbes from one person to another. So really profound stuff there. Again, highlighting the importance of the microbiome and how much that needs to be balanced in order to have proper immune function. So you can overcome things like a SARS-CoV-2 infection or a strep infection or what have you. So to me, um, you know, the stories of these kids' successes um, the stories of these recoveries, of these, these children overcoming these challenges, no matter what the neuroinflammatory, neurobehavioral condition might be, that's profoundly important. And we need to follow what those kids are doing. And so I've always wanted to know if, if we have this massive epidemic of, of neuroinflammatory chronic health conditions in kids, and we know that some of them anecdotally are reversing these conditions, why isn't this commonly known? Why do people not um, go to their pediatrician and get instructions on how to reverse these things? What is it that we need to do to get the help to the people? So my nonprofit organization, Epidemic Answers, started a research project called Documenting Hope. And our purpose was to begin documenting the hope of reversal and recovery for kids so that we could make it more available to physicians, make it more available to families. So we have um, two IRB approved research studies. Um, IRB means that they've been reviewed by an ethics and safety and scientific rigor um, standard. And um, both of these studies are underway right now. The first study is called CHIRP. It stands for Child Health Inventory for Resilience and Prevention. And it's basically documenting and cataloging all the things that are in children's lives in the modern world and how they correlate to health outcomes. In other words, we have an online survey that parents take and we ask questions about everything they do on a daily basis what they're eating, what they're thinking, what they're putting on their skin. And then we also ask about symptoms and diagnoses, et cetera. And, and that um, study is open to any parent who has a child between the ages of one and 15 in um, the United States. So if you have one, you can go to um, documentinghope.com and look for the CHIRP study there and you can participate. Our second study is called the FLIGHT study. And this one is a longitudinal study, which is looking, um, taking a small group of children who have one of these neuroinflammatory conditions or uh, chronic health condition like a rheumatoid arthritis or uh, anxiety, depression, those sorts of things. And then we're bringing them through an 18 month program where we are going to use personalized interventions that may include diet, may include cleaning up their environment, and may include personalized therapeutics, like some of the things I was talking about, like the polyvagal safe and sound therapy wouldn't be an example of a personalized therapeutic that one child might need. So we're bringing these children through a program to try and restore balance in their bodies. We're going to be documenting um, their changes over time, things that you can measure in blood, urine, stool. So we'll be watching their nutritional status change. We'll be watching um, their inflammatory markers go down, hopefully. And we're also documenting this on film because at the end, we want to be able to tell the stories of these children via film so that we can encourage and inspire other families to seek these resources that are out there. They're just not well-known um, by most people. So you can learn more about these studies. You can participate in the CHIRP study. The flight study is recruiting participants between the ages of two and 15 in Northern Virginia only right now. 
So we may be opening a second uh, site. So you please do go check out documentaryhope.com. And um, I'm going to conclude with a, a short video, which is just um, me explaining this um, project, the Documenting Hope project, and what our aims are. So I'm just gonna uh, play that video and um, see you on the other side. Humans, we have a problem. The way we are living in the modern world, the things we do every day, are making us all very, very sick. Even the people in the most resourced countries, those that seem to have the best shot at living a healthy and vibrant life, have the highest chronic disease burden and the highest rate of obesity. And what's worse, the most resourced among us have the sickest kids, the little humans that by design should be the healthiest, right? I don't think people realize what a big deal this is. I don't think they realize what a tsunami of problems we will be facing in the future if we do not tackle this right now. My organization has been studying this problem for a long time. We decided to raise some money and do some research to better understand this problem. We found out a few things. We found out that it isn't any one thing that is making us sick. It's a whole bunch of things, all making the other things worse. It's the cumulative and synergistic effect of living in the modern world that is making our kids sick. The good news is this. If these conditions develop because of the way we're living, then that means there is something we can do about it. For years, we've been capturing the stories of kids who have made recoveries from all types of conditions, even the ones they tell you are genetic or lifelong. And we've been closely studying what those kids did to heal. We've learned that health is about much more than just genes, and it is not about avoiding scary germs. Come on, those are old ideas, and they don't explain the exponential increase in the number of kids that have chronic health and developmental conditions today. Humans, we've lost our way. We've missed the bus. We think that by spending a lot of money on big medical centers and fancy new technologies that we're going to be able to find the secret to health. The truth is, the secret to health has been here all along. Maybe if we remain humble, honor nature and our planet and the balance that our bodies need. Maybe if we really reconnect with what it means to be human. Just maybe we can return to health. The thing is, we know that healing is possible. We've documented true stories of hope, stories of kids who have completely overcome developmental delays and challenges. Children who had rheumatoid arthritis, who had life-threatening food allergies, who had cancer, but then got better and are living their lives without medication. And still, most people don't know that this is even possible. So we're doing an ambitious research study, not only to demonstrate that it is possible, but also to show how it happens. Our goal is to help a small group of families help their children overcome health or developmental challenges. And we're going to document all the things it takes to get them better. And we're gonna document this on film too so that we can share this knowledge with you, so you can do it for your family too. In order to help more families, we need your help. There is no time to lose. Make a donation at documentinghope.com and feel great knowing that you were a part of the solution. We are documenting hope for our kids and for our future. Join us.
So thank you for, for listening to that video and thank you for listening to um, me give my presentation. As you can see, um, you know, the answers for our kids aren't necessarily in a pill. They're not in a you know, special fancy device or even a, you know, one really amazingly skilled doctor or you know, medical center. A lot of these things that are gonna get our kids better are really about returning to the basics and the fundamentals of how human beings are supposed to be in the world and in nature and in families and in communities. And so um, we are doing the research to, to put some additional evidence behind what we already know and also, um, you know, it's, it's gonna be done independently because there, again, there's no product to sell. There's no money to be made off this. We just want to restore children's health.